Well, this video is going to be about uh, starting the bike for the first time since I restored it. And with any project you strip down to the chassis and rebuild, there's going to be issues, some bugs you got to work out when you uh, get them going. This had three bugs. It had one major issue and two minor issues. The major issue was the clutch slipped worse than what it did when I before I started on it. And I actually remedied that and I show how I remedied that in the video. And the other issue is it keeps burning out bulbs. It burned out the neutral light and the speedometer light a couple times and the tail light and uh, that I did a little research and I think it's the lithium battery because the 75 and older bikes had a voltage regulator and uh, you know that lithium battery probably worked fine with them. The 76 used the battery as its voltage regulator. The wiring's a little different and you know the setup's a bit different. So I went and bought a lead acid battery and hopefully that remedies the the uh, lights burning out. Now I, the the charger and all that stuff my brother uses all those batteries so I just give him the, the charger and all that stuff um, if that remedies the problem. I'm, I'm like 99% certain it will because it was fine before with the lead acid battery and now all of a sudden you know the lights are significantly brighter and they're going off like flash bulbs. And I think that that's because the alternator is just putting out too much current because the battery isn't drawing a big demand from the alternator. So, like I say, I'll, I think I'm pretty certain the lead acid battery that I put in it will remedy that problem. The third issue is, and this, had, this was an issue before I took the bike apart too. It, it was when I first got it going after getting spark back to it. Now the bike sat for probably a year and a half without being started. I hadn't ridden it in a while, then I went to ride it. And it wouldn't start, it had no spark. And that's why my brother brought it down and I just decided to totally restore it. The gas in it was pretty gummed up and from sitting for a year and a half. And I think the carburetor needs a quick cleaning. I ordered a needle and seat and float bowl gasket for it. And I'll do a video on cleaning the carburetor when I do that. But like about third throttle, just staying in one gear without shifting, without accelerating or deaccelerating, kind of I think between the idle and, and high speed circuit, it just kind of picks up a little bit of a misfire, a random misfire. And it did that before I restored it and I replaced everything in the ignition system. Uh, it's timing, everything's spot on, point gap. I even put a new spark plug in because I couldn't remember the last time I've changed spark plug, maybe 20 years or so, and it looked fine, but I thought everything else is new, put a new plug in it too, so I did. And uh, so I think that the issue is fuel, and like I say, I, after 43 years, that carburetor's never been touched, and I don't think I'd be able to reuse the gasket for the float bowl after 43 years, so I did order a float bowl gasket and a needle and seat. You know, I have it apart, kind of crazy not to put a needle and seat in for the float too. And, uh, and I'll give that a quick cleaning and like I say, I'll, I'll make a video on that. So here we go, this, this will be the video of starting it. And then another thing too is this thing, this bike, it starts first kick warm every time, but it used to always start first kick cold too. And it's been taking two, three kicks to start it cold. So I think that um, going through the carburetor will uh, solve that issue too. I always, you know, this bike, I like I say, I've owned it since brand new and it could sit for six months. You turn the key on, turn the fuel on, give it a choke, one kick, it's running. And when I rode it regularly, like on a regular basis, you wouldn't even need to put the choke on it. You could just turn the key on, give it a kick, and it was running. And you could go right away. This thing is not cold-blooded at all. It'll take right off, stone cold, no problem at all. But it definitely has more uh, power and performance. I mean, I was riding it up and down the driveway. I rode it quite a bit more than what I show in the video. And with the, with the clutch not slipping and the engine tuned properly, it really has a lot more pep to it. And I just hit the throttle in the driveway 
and it pulled the wheel off about an inch. I was surprised, and if I was sitting back a little further, I would have been in a full-fledged wheelie, and I really don't want to do wheelies with it because I don't want to take a chance on dumping it, especially on my, you know, I don't have a very big driveway, so I can't, you know, rip it off, but you know, I, I'll, I'll get the, uh, I'll get a helmet here, and uh, I'll do some video in the future riding it on the road. So I'll do, like I say, I'll do a video of doing the carburetor and uh, riding it on the road. But I think we're getting the bugs worked out. The clutch works excellent. Like I say, the power is much better now. I mean, I'd ride my brother's Suzuki 185. It's a 78, I think, is 175, or 185, Suzuki 185. And you punch the throttle on that, you're in a full-fledged wheelie. And this bike used to be like that and hadn't been like that in a long time because the clutch slips so bad. Well, now that the clutch grabs in the engine, the timing is right, the point gap is right, the you know, new coil, new condenser, the points are new. First set of new points I've ever put in it. I've just cleaned them in the past and regapped them. Um, new spark plug, it was probably the third plug this bike has had since it's been new. Um, really performs well now, really super super duper happy with the performance of it. Other than that little break up off, you know, like third throttle and also the uh, little harder to start cold. And we'll get that all solved. Other than that, really, really runs nice and just totally happy with it. So let's get on with uh, getting it started and riding it with the slipping clutch and then riding it with a good clutch. Well, let's see what it does. Give it a kick and see if it starts up. Give it a choke. Maybe put the choke off. I adjusted the carburetor and got it smoothed out a bit. So we got a headlight working. That's low beam, high beam. Give it the gas it brightens up because it's uh, just driven off the alternator only. So I don't know what the deal is with the clutch, but it actually slips worse than it did before, so may have to pull this cover off, which just basically this foot peg, the brake pedal, and the kickstarter comes off, and this fan, and I can just pull this cover. Just to show kind of how much it slips, and I didn't even realize this until just a little bit ago, but I'll put it in gear, and then I can push the bike. Oh, so I'm moving it and the engine isn't turning over. So that gives you an idea how bad it slips. So I took this cable and undid it from the mechanism. I put this back on, put all this back together, but I disconnected it and I turned that to free up to where I could move the clutch lever with my finger with no tension whatsoever. I could still put it down in gear and push the bike without it moving. And I want to show you a little 
something I think maybe I put that first blade in the wrong way around. So I'm just going to show you with this clutch right here. You can see the gap right here. This is quite large. And then uh, this first plate that goes in, see how it's like it's like a bevel. This plate is different from the rest of the plates and this plate has to go in first. And I think I accidentally put it in upside down because I'm looking at this gap. That's got to be quarter inch. Let me show you on the bike here if I can get the camera. I haven't in. pulled the cover yet, but I'm not too far from it. Let me see if I can show you the clutch in here. That took me all of maybe three or four minutes to get that, all that stuff off. I'm gonna pop the drain plug out here and I almost started pulling the screws on the cover and I thought, oh, I gotta drain the oil first. So get the oil drained out and then we'll pull that cover. Okay, we're down to the clutch and I got about 15 minutes into it and I could have probably used the tools from the tool kit to get down to here. There's really no big deal to I got these gaskets new, so that's no, no big deal. And uh, but you can see this gap now, and you can see this gap. It's quite a bit bigger. So I'm going to take this. It's really hard to tell looking in there. It does look like it's together, right? But I'm going to take that cover off and have a look. See if those plates are right. I'm going to put it in gear and. See if this turns by that staying still when I push it. I guess I turned it up, but you can see, yeah. So it's definitely not engaging. You can also see when I work the clutch, it definitely opens up, but God, it opens up a lot. All right, let me uh, pull those bolts out and get that pressure plate off. I found the cause of the slipping. Yeah, I messed up big time. This plate is in backwards. Now let me show it to you here. Let me get it out of here. Okay, see how it's see how it's shaped? And this is the most important part of the whole clutch to go in the right way. This goes in this way around, not that way around. So that will cause a major problem. All right, let's put the clutch back together and put it in gear and just push it and see how it works. If it works okay, I'm gonna put it all back together, fill it, refill it with oil and crank it up and see how it goes. I wanna show this why I have it apart. This is what pushes the pressure plate, this part out to release the clutch. And that right now is right up against that shaft so it can't go in any further so that's got to be totally disengaged or I should say the clutch would be totally engaged because this is 100 percent as far back as it goes but yeah that that gap now is more like that gap there so I think that'll solve our problem so that's back together. Let's uh, put it in gear. Got my, I just got these out of the trash can to collect the dripping oil. I know when I tip, set it back up. In fact, I'm going to put a pan there. And then I'm going to put it in gear and see what it does if I push it up. This moves or if the whole assembly turns. I guess that's a good way to drain the oil out of the crankcase. But look at this. The whole engine turns. All right, and I got the clutch way uh, loose because I was playing with it. So I'm gonna somewhat adjust it before I put the cover on and make sure it disengages. All right, now that's disengaged and that's engaged. And I'm about out to there when it starts turning the motor and it's got that much more to go, so. I think we'll call that good for now. Hopefully that solves the problem. Pretty simple fix if it does. These discs were supposed to be more meatier. 
and I put stronger springs in. They're not thicker, they're wider. And, you know, more, more surface to grip. And, uh, all, you know, all these clutches on these Honda motorcycles for probably from the 70s, all the 70s probably, maybe even into the 80s, a lot of them are the same. You know, they didn't change, they didn't make different clutches for different size bikes. I mean, you can buy a Honda 500 and it has the same clutch that this thing has. So I got to torque this or torque these down yet. I got to go in the house and get the torque specifications. But everything looks pretty good on there. Let me, uh, let me get those torqued and uh, get this thing back together and running. So these had to be torqued to 72 inch pounds and they're all at, well it's out of gear now, but I had it in gear when I torqued them. And uh, I put on a brand new genuine Honda gasket. I bought that gasket probably 30 years ago when it was leaking over in here to replace it and never did. And I did change it obviously when I put the clutch in it and put it together backwards. And uh, now I'm going to put that, because I don't want to open another gasket set, I had this gasket just separate loose that I had bought. So now it's going to get used. So let's throw the side cover on, oil it up, and see how it goes. All right, the cover is back on and torqued down, and I think I'm going to put the oil in it next so I don't forget. And then we'll uh, get the, you know, all the other stuff on and see how it goes. Well, that took all of about an hour total. All back together nicely. Looks good. I'm glad I painted these apart and not together because that would have messed up the paint job had it been painted assembled. And my brother asked me, I talked to my brother about the clutch, and he asked me what type of oil. And I really didn't remember, but I told him it was the correct stuff for motorcycles. So this is what it's got in it. It recommends, uh, I don't know if that shows up there or not, but it does recommend 1040 oil. And that's what I put in it. So let's uh, crank it up. This thing usually starts without a choke. We're going to give it a try. Usually when I ride it regularly, one kick, no choke, cold. And it is stone cold. Oops, I'm getting oil on the, my fancy paint on the exhaust pipe there. From my oily hands. So let me clean up my hands and uh, get the camera on a tripod and we'll crank it up again. Well, let's give it a try and see what happens. No choke, one kick, see if it goes. Well, I guess I'm going to have to put the choke on. Oops, I guess I should leave the choke on. That's no choke. This is a clutch adjuster and very little movement makes a big difference. So we'll just turn it, let's see, I can't remember, I, we'll turn it that way that much and see what happens. Whoops, yeah, that's, that was the wrong way. Get it restarted here, I'll turn it the other way.
him a little bit. I like the way that is, so give that a try in the, in the ride. I can put it all the way to full throttle before we just start revving up. And even with the original clutch, it can slip. That's how nice that engine runs, too. Whoops. Flipping my tripod on things behind. Uh oh, the headlight's not on for some odd reason. Well, the wire connector might have come undone. We'll take a look at that. Headlight issue is the little connector in there is broken and the wire fell out. So I cut the this off of a headlight that I had that was burned out and soldered it and shrink wrapped it onto the headlight. All right, got both both uh, beams working again. There we go. That's the battery I picked up and I just filled it with acid. It's got to sit for about an hour to make sure, you know, because it tells you to fill them up to these upper lines, let it sit an hour, and then just top them back off the upper lines and charge it. And it says about four to six hours with a three quarter amp charger. Well, I have a one amp charger, so I'll do one amp at maybe three hours and call it good. The alternator in the bike will charge it the rest of it. This is the old hose for the vent and it comes with a new hose. So I'll put the new hose on and then the little cover for the battery I'll be able to put back on too. Well there we be. It seems to be working good. I didn't take it out on the road. I don't Michigan you don't need a helmet to ride. You can ride on the roads without a helmet, but I'm not going to do that. I value my head. So I want a helmet before I go out on the road and my helmet's up north at the cottage. Might see if I can find an old school bell helmet or something like that from this air and paint it this blue just for riding this for a little I do ride it. But it seems to, to run pretty darn good. It really gets up and goes, no clutch slippage whatsoever. I can nail a throttle wide open and it takes right off and goes and I could easily pull a front wheel off the ground. I'm not going to because I don't want to take a chance on dumping it but yeah, it really is responsive. The engine runs really good. A little, little uh, break up if you're just like third throttle not shifting revving the engine but you give it all the gas you want and it takes right off and goes so I might order a overhaul kit for the carburetor seeing it's never been overhauled and rebuild it probably wouldn't hurt after 43 years to clean the innards of it out but it runs it idles super nice it it accelerates really well and uh, now i got to clean it up and 
riding it around in my driveway there was some you know a little bit of water down at the bottom of the driveway where I was turning around it kind of got on the wheel and a little bit on the frame and just take a you can kind of see it just take a damp cloth and clean it up and uh, and then just sit here and look at it for a while. I want to thank everyone that's um, followed me on this motorcycle and we get some some decent weather. It's only 35 degrees out so it's not really appetizing weather for riding a motorcycle. But we get a nice day and uh, get a helmet, get my helmet here or get a helmet and uh, we'll take it out on the road for a run. Super happy with it. Looks amazing. Looks like a brand new bike again. Hit the like button if you enjoyed my video. If you enjoy my channel, please subscribe and thank you for watching. Yeah, obviously I'm not going to ride the motorcycle today. It's snowing out right now and it's been at times like vertically going or horizontal snow, whiteout conditions. Uh, they got a high wind warning out. I guess we've been. 30, 40 mile an hour sustained winds and 50, 60 mile an hour gusts. It's actually pretty calm right now. It's probably only blowing about 10, 15 miles an hour. But yeah, it's been howling, no doubt about that. Last time we had a windstorm like this, we lost our power for seven days.